All motors of the AJV8 series can be considered a beta version. Frankly raw elements include all the pipes of the cooling system, the pump, most of the timing parts and the entire injection control system. The motors are saved by a large margin in terms of the performance of the cooling system and a very condo design of the entire mechanical part. It is not in vain that they are so easily forced. The AJ26-AJ26S motors are the forerunner not only of the AJ27 units that were installed after restyling, but also of the already considered AJ33-AJ34S series with the next generation Jaguar XJ. And this is so obvious that the AJ33 can be considered as the final version of the AJ26 refinement when installing all the new and improved components. The original version provided for two variants of the working volume, 3.2 and 4 liters, as well as a version for the same 4 liters with a compressor. Their power was 243, 294, and 375 horsepower, respectively. It is curious that for 3.2 motors, the timing is the same as for compressor ones, without a phase regulator on the intake shaft. The Denso control system is quite unusual for us, but there are almost no complaints about it. Although sensors and wiring are one of the main causes of failures. The cylinder block here is aluminum, the liners are nicosil, do not confuse with elusil. Theoretically, this is a conditionally eternal, extremely hard coating that is only afraid of brakes and acids. Timing chain for atmospheric engines 4.0 with a two-stage regulator on the intake shafts. The AJ26-AJ26S motors appeared in 1996 on the Jaguar XK120, but by 1998 they began to change to the AJ27 unit for several reasons. First of all, the rapid tightening of environmental standards dictated the transition to Euro 3-4 and a change in the injection control system and hence the complication of the entire power system. The second important factor was the rejection of nicosyl coating. Nominally, it is believed that he had problems with high sulfur gasoline. In practice, it is clear that rather the level of rejects during coating on multi-cylinder engines was very high, and the quality of adhesion of the coating to the cylinder wall was low. Nowadays, many blocks from this period are still alive, but there are also delaminations and burrs. Unfortunately, even a bare block is quite difficult to detect defects. An ultrasonic diagnostic device is needed to check for the presence of internal cracks and a circular measurement of the cylinder to identify deviations characteristic of peeling of the coating. In most cases, it is easier to assemble an engine on a block from an AJ27 than to bother with finding a live Nicosil one. Practice has shown that cast iron wears out faster than Nicosil, but still very slowly, even with runs over 400,000, the sleeves can be in excellent condition. The timing belt is the most problematic element of the engine. The original version with the plastic base of the dampers and early chains had a resource of less than 100,000 and was also prone to chain slips. The owners even developed a life hack. After starting the engine, it was necessary to gas at least up to 2,000 RPM so that the tensioner tightened the chains well and the clattering sound disappeared. Of the good, only a long resource and stable operation of the first generation phase regulators can be noted. On the AJ27 they are much more capricious. But now the vast majority of engines have an already modified motor, and all concerns can only be attributed to collectible copies, which have never been climbed into the motor and the timing kit has not been changed. You must understand that even such complex cars as the Jaguar X308 were sometimes serviced by unofficial services, and a comprehensive modification of the timing belt may not have been completed. It happened that they were specifically looking for the same elements or even put used parts. In general, after the purchase, you should carefully look and listen. The total resource of a modified timing is usually 250,000, and it may be worth opening the engine to check all the elements. It should be noted that the upper chains on this generation are very successful, with little stretch. If you leave the roller primary chains and do not change them to chains of the 2001 model and younger, then the upper short ones can be left alone. On the AJ27 motors, the block received cast iron sleeves, and the control system was replaced. Externally, 
This is best noticeable by the absence of a vacuum regulator on the throttle valve and the presence of a multi-pin connector on the cylinder head for controlling the phase regulator, which has become more expensive and capricious. Floating speeds and lack of power due to their failures are common on this generation of engines. The timing changed significantly in 2001, and at the same time, they finally got rid of the idea of backslash U200B backslash U200 busing plastic dampers and put in Morse chains, lamellar ones. They turned out to be quieter and more reliable, so this design migrated to the AJ34. The resource of such a timing belt is the same quarter of a million thousand kilometers on atmospheric engines, and on supercharged engines it is usually one and a half to two times less. It is not clear why they changed the location of the mounting points for the timing tensioners in the AJ34. In any case, this complicates the installation of timing kits from newer engines on the AJ27-26. In principle, this is possible and reasonable. Dampers from 4.2 are more reliable, cheaper, and available with shorter order times. Check the options by VIN. Later engines differ from earlier ones in many small details. Of some interest is the presence in the period of 1998 to 1999 of compressor motors in a Nikasil block, but with a body kit from AJ27S. To understand what kind of motor is installed, in this case, it is possible only by the unit number. A separate paragraph should be given to the motor pump. The original pumps were repeatedly upgraded, the design was changed about five times. As a result, there are pumps for different types of seals, you need to select a unit for the cylinder block according to VIN. There are differences in both performance and durability, early kits are notorious for poor bearing and seal life. Non-original pumps are often universal and, oddly enough, more tenacious. The cooling pipes here are mostly still metal, but not very thoughtful fastenings and seals add a little worries. Tank ventilation has an unsuccessful T under the hood, as a result suction and excess dirt in the motor. On AJ26S-27S engines, the compressor is equipped with a liquid intercooler, and an important part of it is the electric pump. As a rule, it requires replacement every five years, and has not been working on a solid part of the machines for a long time. It is checked only by a scanner by monitoring the temperature at the inlet. In this case, not only the pump itself often dies, but also its wiring. Despite a certain number of minor flaws, the engines of this Jaguar are surprisingly durable, and if problems are solved in time, they will please with the resource. Even the Castle OV with a compressor. Brake System Healthy conservatism in brake design leaves almost no chance for mechanical problems. Conventional single piston calipers front and rear have good service life. The parking brake system is implemented by a drum brake inside the rear brake disc. Such a scheme is as reliable as possible, except that it is not worth it to regularly slow down on the go, the resource of the pads is small. But it's unlikely that anyone will drift a Jaguar XJ. There are usually no complaints about the effectiveness of the braking system, rather large 325mm discs in the front provide adequate braking dynamics for a car that is not too heavy. And in compressor cars, the thickness of the discs is as much as 32mm, so it is difficult to overheat them outside the racetrack. For those who do not have enough ordinary cast iron discs, there is official tuning in the form of various perforated and even ceramic kits. The ABS unit is unfortunately bad. It was during this period that Bosch produced not the best models. Dumps of the system due to soldering is a common thing. Fortunately, this is curable. The main thing is that the work is done by a specialist who knows the peculiarities of restoring just such boards. And you also need to watch the condition of the brake pipes and hoses. Corrosion of the pipes happens regularly. The pendants are quite original in design. At the same time, the maintainability as a whole pleases, here all the ball joints are removable, except for one, the rear lower arm of the front suspension, and even that one, in fact, has long been learned to restore. At the front, the levers are quite thin and at the same time expensive, there are a lot of interchangeable elements, and they are not cheap, and there are frankly few replacements. The design of the rear suspension is a little shocking. An actuator is used as the upper arm, 
and instead of a lower outer joint, a pair of roller bearings are installed on each side. Well, since the drive is a suspension arm, it is made in the form of a rigid cardan shaft with two cross pieces. And then there are systems that increase the price of shock absorbers. The CAT system involves the installation of shock absorbers with magnetoresistive fluid. If you have green racks, then this is it. Oddly enough, CATS is quite reliable if the wiring is monitored. Shock absorber valves with it may have a slightly shorter resource than conventional ones, but with runs over 200,000 kilometers, it is often still in good order. Well, the rear suspension on Jaguar could have self-inflating shock absorbers, expensive and quite reliable. In the steering there are ordinary rail and parametric power steering, everything is as simple as possible. The rack is not located very well, with the slightest damage to the anthers, there is a chance of water getting inside and corrosion. The price of a new one is at least 400000 and change, and sometimes reaches a million, depending on the greed of sellers and delivery times. Hoses with inevitable slight fogging during rolling are a common occurrence, and on a 20-year-old specimen, the hoses will most likely have to be recrimped. In general, the steering is quite reliable and maintainable. The main thing is not to bring it to the point where you will need to buy everything new at once. The specific design of the rear axle and gearbox brings a little more trouble for maintenance than usual. Here, the crosses of the cardan drives require attention and a very high load on the bearings and the housing of the main pair. And at the same time, the alignment must be perfect. Any small rear subframe bushing can cause hard-to-diagnose vibrations under load. All boxes are our good old friends. Both the ZF5 HP24 and the Mercedes 722.6 are considered among the most reliable units, roughly on par with the old Eisen longitudinal 4-speed automatics. With real runs of up to 200,000 kilometers, these automatic transmissions are almost certainly in good condition, even taking into account powerful engines. Why the compressor motor got a Mercedes box is not very clear. After all, the 5 HP 24 nominally withstands 490 newton meters of torque, and the 5 HP 24A modification also digests 700 newton meters on an Audi with a 6.0 engine. In addition, the ZF has its closest relative, the 5 HP 30, which holds even more newtons. Anyway, the 722.6 is a bit more fuel efficient thanks to the lockup of the turbocharger in first gear. While the ZF is set up more old fashioned, lockup only works from third, and the controlled slip mode is almost never used at light load. The Mercedes box is larger, it has a complex valve body design with hydraulic signal amplifiers and a less compact mechanical part, and in general, it is more conservative. Although the ZF boxes of this generation are almost eternal, they also have weaknesses. For runs over 200, the donut block wears out, which means that oil pollution increases, the dynamics of the car worsens, and consumption increases. Along the way, there may be problems with the solenoids. But the real weak point is still different. The bearing of hubs A and B is a thrust roller bearing. It does not receive enough lubrication and wears out. There are two consequences, the rollers can fall out and arrange Stalingrad in the box, but more often, the play of shafts A and B relative to each other first appears, and damage to drums A and B begins. The seal ring on the shaft side and the piston of drum A are damaged, the compression pressure in it the package is reduced, and it starts to burn. In package A, there is already a loss of pressure due to the backlash of the shafts and damage to the piston. While the assembly is stably very heavily loaded, it's not for nothing that so many clutches were stuffed there. The second serious headache is the weak body of drum A. It breaks off the place where the retaining ring is attached, and package A burns out completely. Along the way, the brake hub D usually breaks, and as a result, the reverse gear of the box begins to slip. It burns out completely only if the box was not sent for repairs, but they tried to gas it. All problems are aggravated when the working pressure adjustment fails, the solenoid and the regulator piston stick. Of the little things, a breakdown of the overrunning clutch, because of it the first gear disappears. This is almost imperceptible, but in urban conditions the consumption increases and the dynamics worsen a little, and the box starts to heat up more. 
with runs over 400,000, where is often observed on both the bushings and the box pump, especially if they drove in dirty oil for a long time, ignoring vibrations. Also, with old and especially overheated boxes, one of the parts of the valve body body bursts, and the wear of the plate channels has not been cancelled if the oil is rarely changed. In general, the design has excellent maintainability, only Drummy will have to look for a new one or with a repair insert. When assembling, new spacer rings are required, it will not be possible to set the working clearances according to the factory without them, all parts change size due to wear. There are a lot of reinforced elements for 5HP24, and, as mentioned above, you can assemble a box that holds 700 newton meters with a guarantee. Pro Series 722.6 This is a very reliable automatic transmission, in which the main problem is the blocking pressure control solenoid. The second trouble is the Mercedes recommendation not to change the oil, which was later edited. But the owners are trying hard to drive the old one, because the original oil is quite expensive, Mercedes was one of the first to sharply raise the price of this consumable. The problem with the K2 drum hub fully affected the boxes that were installed on the Jaguar, so many automatic transmissions have already been sorted out, and more than once. And what will be inside is difficult to predict. Of all the exterior panels, there are only three aluminum ones, the hood and the front fenders, the rest of the parts are made of ordinary galvanized steel. And, unfortunately, the body here requires careful maintenance. Ideally, the car should be in a dry garage, and the body should undergo an annual thorough inspection. In general, this is not an option for every day, unless you are an eccentric billionaire, and even then it is better to take a closer look at the X350 with aluminum body. The rarity of the model has an additional plus, the history of many copies can be traced back far into the past, especially if these are small circulation and expensive options like the XJR. Most of the 10 cars that are now on sale have traces of body repairs of varying quality. Among copies up to a million, you definitely will not find the perfect one. Of the more expensive options, an excellent one can come across. The car has long become a cult and is often exploited with tenderness by wealthy fans. But there is no point in complaining about a slight difference in tone, and even more so about different thicknesses of the paintwork. The cars are painted with a high proportion of manual labor, especially the expensive versions of Daimler and Vanden Plas. They have multi-layer coatings. Here the usual methods of instrumental assessment of the quality of the body are not very applicable. Don't forget UV flashlights and color filters to evaluate the originality of the coating, if you care. And it is better to contact professionals who deal with such machines all the time. When checking the condition of the body, inspect the thresholds, arches, doors for repairs, swelling, and chips. Do not be lazy to look into any gap. The most problematic places are quite typical. These are the wheel arches, the junction of the threshold and the amplifier from below, the threshold shelf under the door seal in the rear, at the junction with the rear arch, the lower part of the doors and the rear panel with the trunk lid. The leading edge of the roof is hardly damaged, but it is recommended to check the entire windshield frame, swellings under the molding and especially in the lower part above the engine shield, plus in the roof area around the sunroof. Due to the peculiarities of the welding of the body, the hatch is a sore spot, the joint of the bath and the roof swells under the rubber band, and the problem cannot be solved with little blood. And do not forget about the rear window frame, from below it rusts at the seams, and visible through corrosion is possible here. And from the trunk you can see that the seam opens inside, at the junction of the rear pillar and the wall of the rear seats. By the way, there is no hatch in the wall for transporting long items, and if you need to take skis, you will have to look for another car. The problem of weak roof pillars was clearly known at the factory. If you remove the glass, you will see that the seams are treated with something like tinning, but after a quarter of a century this advanced technology is losing ground, and cracks appear in the metal. Of the unusual problems, the front edge of the door at the installation site of the opening limiter, the metal here cracks very well. Let's start with the good. Cars from the factory have a good layer of anti-corrosive on the bottom, and the power elements are made of thick metal. 
The seams are very well covered in the engine compartment, and the front panel is usually intact from the inside, even around the radiators. In the rest, with the exception of copies of special preservation, there is a solid negative. A lot depends on the quality of storage. There are many more cars on sale that can be used to study how Jaguars of the 20th century were made and what they looked like when they were new. At the same time, you can understand what mistakes the developers made. The first of them, oddly enough, is the extremely poor design of the hatch. Its drains easily become clogged, and for complete cleaning it is recommended to remove the windshield and ceiling. Not everyone does this, especially on time, and as a result there is water in the cabin. Taking into account the double metal sheets in the structure, and this is the second, fatal mistake, there is a difficult to eliminate corrosion coming from the inside. The area at the driver's feet and under the transverse floor reinforcements under his seat just turn out to be the place where moisture accumulates under the carpets and where corrosion first of all begins to sharpen the metal. The bottom already suffers from our climate the most and through holes in it are not uncommon. The metal of the spars is thick, they rot last. The floors of the body are made of fairly thin steel, and some places the metal here is also double, with amplifiers, as a result of attempts to improve the rigidity of the body during upgrades. So there is also internal corrosion, especially at the junction of the floors and the motor shield, and holes there are a matter of time. A thick layer of anti-corrosive material on the outside does not help much in this situation. In addition, the anti-corrosive agent begins to move away near the seams, and then its layer loses its tightness so that it simply hides the processes occurring in the metal and even accelerates them, creating cavities with water. Even on not the most neglected specimens, there are through holes in the outer threshold in the front, where there is a problem with the arch, and there is almost always corrosion at the junction of the floors and the threshold, since the seam is not really protected. The wheel arches are well covered with anti-corrosive, but there are at least two typical problem areas in the front arches. This is the part of the upper strut booster bracket that the subframe rests on, behind the suspension spring, and the recess behind the wheel, above the front sill. The first element is not covered by a locker, and nearby conditions are created for the accumulation of dirt in the joint, and unsuccessful fastening of the locker leads to accumulation of dirt in the niche behind the wheel. In addition, there is a lot of wiring and several glands. And along the upper spar there is a tourniquet, which is attached with clips to the metal. In general, if the car was poorly maintained, then there are plenty of places for rust to develop. There are noticeably fewer problems in the rear arch, but on machines of the X300 generation, through corrosion of the front wall and a rotten joint of the inner arch and wing are already encountered. Despite the similarity of the bodies, there may be differences in the quality of execution, but this experience should also be taken into account. It is unpleasant that cars come across with corrosion of the junction of the front suspension cup and the upper side member of the front end, the area covered by the wing rots. The situation is aggravated by the fact that the number plate of the body is located nearby on the right wing. The remaining typical places of corrosion in hidden areas of the body are quite predictable. These are, for example, the luggage compartment and the area above the rear subframe. The place of the side members bending in front of the rear wheels is an example of an unsuccessful implementation of the ventilation of the load-bearing element of the internal cavity of the floor. The zones of the front and rear panels at the brackets for attaching the power beams of the bumpers suffer greatly. They are here on two supports, and these supports are rusting. Under the plastic drainage panel, the seams next to the roof pillars are also rusting, the sealant gives up over time, and red traces are noticed there on many copies. The front subframe is filled with foam from the inside, and its design is complex, so depressurization quickly leads to its complete destruction. The Jaguar XJR is a specific car in terms of design. Almost all elements are disassembled into their component parts, only the availability of new parts is in question, so this is not an advantage. Probably, in England for these machines you can find numerous guides, gaskets, shaped nuts, pins and other fittings. In our country, availability was limited even a dozen years ago, forcing owners to look for acquaintances or be serviced by dealers. We have already written above about the connection between the condition of the hatch and the floors of the car, so this is not just a decorative element. 
To clean the extremely poorly located drains, you will have to remove the hatch, which requires dismantling the ceiling. In turn, for this it is better to remove the windshield. This is what the official service and repair manual recommends, and this is what the dealer will do. Moreover, the rear ceiling cannot be properly disconnected without removing the rear window. If you don't do all this, the ceiling can easily be broken. However, there are specialized services for Jaguar hatches, and they developed workaround repair technologies a long time ago. The icing on the cake is the plastic sunroof guides, which break over time. And finding them was not easy 10 years ago. Now someone prints them on a 3D printer, but the quality is still far from factory. The sunroof drive motor is rather weak, the brushes wear out, and the control board is leaky and sour from water entering the hatch. The rubber seal disappeared from sale back in 2014, after which it was available sporadically. This did not add to the reliability of the hatch. Oddly enough, there are no complaints about the door mechanisms, locks, and power windows. The window regulators here are sectorial, without extra cables, and, unlike the hatch, they did not stint on the guides. The maximum of what can be found is breakage of door handle cables or non-contact in connectors, and mirrors suffer, especially with photochrome. The headlights burn out, but they are relatively inexpensive and are still available, and there are no problems with disassembling the lenses. The open type design is very convenient to repair. And on the back of a bunch of surprisingly resistant chrome, but salty cocktails sometimes finish it off. It makes no sense to criticize such a salon, it is royal in every sense. Even if the leather of the steering wheel and the handle of the automatic transmission sometimes does not last long enough. We must remember that genuine leather needs to be maintained. But in general, the choice of materials and build quality are good, although the ergonomics may seem specific. It's a pity that the British have a poor attitude to little things. Thus, the strange cup holder in the armrest is structurally unsuccessful and is extremely rare to find in working order. The plastic little things are either made to be very durable, or they crack on their own, like the triangles that attach sun visors. And yes, the ceiling sags and falls off both the panel itself, which is removed to access the hatch, and its fabric covering. But with the climate, everything is interesting here. The British did not provide for a cabin filter, and air conditioning radiators are clogged on all cars. And not from the inside, but from the outside, until the air is completely blocked. The service reports that it is necessary to completely disassemble the panel, but in fact, a washing vacuum cleaner and a small set of modified attachments allow you to wash the radiator without disassembling the interior. To do this, you can crawl through the air duct at the passenger's feet. However, the price they ask for this is one that the salon will pay for most of the services without hesitation. And there are also two fans for the heater, and this is not for the long wheelbase version, but for everyone. However, the rest of the system works well, there are few failures, and the efficiency is beyond praise. In general, it must be admitted that by the time the X308 appeared, Jaguar had made great strides towards improving quality. In many ways, the reduction in the number of breakdowns is due to the gradually growing quality of wiring and blocks. There are thick wires and large terminals. It looks outdated, but in practice it's more of a plus. All in all, the X308 is a fairly stable machine, but there are a few things that spoil everything. The first one is the throttle. On machines with AJ27-27S motors, there is a tricky electric throttle. He, like on the Saab 9 to 5, pretends to be mechanical, but the cable does not open the damper directly, but only controls the potentiometer. Here, even the throttle cocking system is similar to Saab's. All pedal and throttle position sensors are hidden inside the case and are limitedly available, and they are subject to wear. The damper axis and the drive motor itself also wear out. As soon as the readings of the sensor cease to match, the motor falls into emergency mode with an error. Similarly with the control unit, if it seems to him that the throttle is somehow moving sharply, he goes into emergency mode. In general, catching this kind of problem on a 20-year-old Jaguar is easy. 
It is usually treated by cleaning the potentiometers. There are special liquids. Someone uses anhydrous isopropyl alcohol. Wealthy owners buy new throttle bodies or send them for restoration. There is a specialized factory in England. Not very reliable radiator and heater fans, an intercooler pump and a gasoline pump are not a super problem for a normal owner. The car has a good foolproof, it has large radiators, and even a powerful XJR can drive for a long time without an intercooler and with one interior fan. But if you save too much, then Jaguar will stop. They usually save because our prices for spare parts are strangely high, although in Europe there has always been a choice of non-original parts and services for restoration and exchange. Now, with the availability of spare parts, the situation has become much worse, but somewhere old stocks help out, somewhere second-hand, and somewhere outright collective farming. Fortunately, everything is arranged simply, the wiring is done without unnecessary difficulties and with high quality. The main thing is to listen and check what is still working in the car, and is it time to think about a replacement? However, the British did their best to make everything in their cars as exclusive as possible. For example, the ignition key blanks here are our own, slightly larger than Ford ones. Sometimes it's easier to order a locksmith to carve a new one than to order a factory one, as the prices bite a lot. The Jaguar XJ is good on the move, and even the power plant with suspensions is long playing, albeit requiring increased maintenance costs. It's a pity the body, which our climate is contraindicated. In the southern regions, these cars could live happily ever after, but there is no quality service that they simply need, and the average income is lower there. For fans of history, XJ is valuable for one more fact. This is the last Jaguar that company founder Sir William Lyons claimed. The body and chassis of the XJ40 were created with his participation, and the design of the X300 was the fruit of his work. It is not surprising that this design option was so reverently treated in the company and carried it through three generations, X300, X308, and X350. In general, there are really a lot of reasons to buy such a car, but only on the condition that you can allocate so much money to it in order to fully appreciate all its advantages.